<laughs> so right now you're on your way to Pontiac, Michigan? Yeah, Pontiac. Is, yeah, we're here about uh, an hour and a half out. Oh, wow. What time are uh, doors tonight? Uh, I believe six. That's usually the general time. It, it, it changes from show to show, just depending on the day of the week, you know. So. Okay, that, that's good. Ho- hopefully you're not late. You don't get caught up in traffic. You don't run around, run over a uh, trick-or-treater. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, that would be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you guys uh, doing anything on stage tonight to celebrate Halloween, or are you just going to go out and play? Uh, you know, not sure yet. There might be some surprises here and there. So, uh, you just never really know. We were well, kind of uh, – we like to wing it. Okay. So you're not 100% sure yet. You might stop off at a right in and maybe pick up some zombie gear or whatnot. You know, maybe it just depends on uh, the stage usually, what kind of things we can uh, make happen, you know. <laughs> that's true. Hey, I, I mean, if it works out, then that's great. Screw it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So how, how has the tour been so far? I mean, you guys been going nonstop since, what, August 31st, right? Yeah, August 31st. Yeah, it's been crazy, man. We, uh, we are on the Nevermore tour with uh, Art of Dying and Children 18.3, and that was about 42 shows. Oh my God! Uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was a long tour, and then um, and then we ended that not too long ago, and then we had a day off to get to New York City, and then we started this new tour with Through Fire, Bailey Anthem, and uh, Cover Your Tracks. Yeah, which is one hell of a tour. <laughs> wow! Yeah, it was fun, man. The bands, the bands are awesome. It's, 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 the vibe's been great, and we're stoked. Yeah, definitely. So once once November 9th hits, Kansas City is done. You just played your final show. You're on your way home. What's the first thing you're going to be doing? Oh, man, I'm going to lock myself in my room for about two weeks and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, dying right now. I'm dying. <laughs> oh, my God, man. I, I, can, I can only imagine. You know, it's, you, don't, you don't have a driver, right? It's just you and the rest of the band, you know, taking, to- taking turns. Yeah, basically, yeah, we all just kind of just shit in and out. So, but Clayton does most of the driving, it's like his thing. So, oh, that's good. I, I mean, as as long as you have someone who's like willing to do it, it sucks when you have like five different people and you're all like, all right, you know what? I think we have to play a game of CeeLo or rock paper scissors or something. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, that this is that's probably like the the last thing that we argue about, to be honest. <laughs> Hey, that's good, man. That's good. So you yeah. just re- you just released your uh, debut album, Worth the Pain, back in September. What's the uh, overall reception been so far for that? You know, it's been it's been huge. I mean, uh, we didn't know what to expect. You know, changing from a male vocalist to a female vocalist. Uh, but so far, I mean, the band has you know quadrupled in Facebook likes. I mean, it's it's been insane. Uh, the fans have been amazing. They've really accepted Alexa into the you know the family and. Um, it's just been awesome. I mean, we're, we're, we're super happy with it and, uh, you know, we're going to continue on and see what happens, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. So what made you change from a male vocalist to a female vocalist? Was it just whatever was available or did you really see something? You know, it, it, we were kind of skeptical at first when uh, Mike Gitter from uh, he's now at another century, he actually signed Killswitch. He was, he was working with us. Wow, and he's like, he goes, he goes, hey, I got this girl singer, and I was like, ah, I don't know, man, like, <laughs> I don't know if we want to go that way, you know. And she's twenty three, so she's significantly younger than everybody else. And oh wow, yeah. So we weren't sure what we wanted to do, and then, uh, and then I heard her demo, and I was like, uh oh, well, looks like we're gonna have a female singer because <laughs> she has a special voice, and she's just a super talented, you know, yeah. vocalist. Yeah, man. Wow. It's, it's kind of crazy. You know, I've never – actually, you might be the first band that went from a male singer to a female singer. I, don't, I, don't, I can't recall any others that did that. You know, I don't uh, – I'm pretty sure, yeah. I mean, as far as I know, the, it's a story kind of special to this band, at least as far as, as, far as I know. But uh, it was definitely a scary transition. We didn't know what to expect. But so far, it's been the best thing we could have ever done. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like – you know, fans are really picky. You know, they'll be, they'll one, one minute will be on your side, the next minute will be off. And to go from a dynamic from a male singer to a female singer, holy crap! I can't believe you pulled it off and then quadrupled in size. Yeah, they, it was crazy. I mean, I think when we when we released "Given uh, Given to Me" the single, we had sixteen thousand likes on Facebook, and now we're only a couple months out of that, and we're almost at a hundred thousand. Oh my god! Um, wow. Yeah, and it's crazy, it's, and it's going worldwide. I mean, we're like, you know. We got presence in South America. We got presence in Europe right now. It's just it's crazy. They're already looking at European tours, and uh, you know we're just kind of we're just going with the flow. See what happens. You know? 
Yeah, really. It's been one hell of a ride for you guys so far. So, wow. <laughs> So far, so good. So. Yeah, really. So I have to ask you about the album art for Worth the Pain. Uh, it's actually very interesting. So in, in the middle, you have the letters in a paper rose burning, and it appears to be a girl's eye in the middle. What exactly is that in the background, though? The background of the eye? Uh, well, you have the rose in the middle, and you have the eye in the middle, and then right like that, that borders around it. And I can't really make it out what exactly it is. Um... Uh, Around. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like some design it. like right around the rose. I'm not too sure what exactly it is. I can't make it out. You know, it's probably just the texture, to be totally honest. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I didn't design it. <laughs> I just, uh, we had a bunch of ideas and we kind of sent it out. And then this was the one that was our favorite. And we just kind of went with it. Uh, damn. So there's no like real hidden meaning in that? You know, I mean, there's there's the letters that are on fire. So it's a little, you know, pretty direct as far as that kind of goes. Uh, but, like, the words of pain, you know, with the album and, like, the theme of a lot of the songs, is just, you know, it's, uh, it, kind of, it seemed to make sense to us. But, uh, I don't know, we, we don't like to explain too much stuff. We like people to just kind of get their own vibe and feel for the things we do. And, just, you know, because in that way we don't put ourselves in a box. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true, yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're very abstract in there. It'd be like, okay, so what, what do you see in this album art? Like, really turn around like some fucking art critic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, because, you know, like, even Give In To Me is not what most people think it's about. Yeah. You know, we have, we have our own meaning, but we kept it open enough for people to find their own meaning in the song. And that's what really what music's about. It's, you know, find your place in it, and, and hopefully it, it moves you in the way it needs to, so... Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what music is in the end. It's whatever you interpret it as. You know, it's how you connect with it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, also on the press release I got, uh, your current plan is to make videos, whether music videos or lyric videos for the rest of the songs on the album. Uh, you actually just released one for One Foot in the Grave, and it has a Halloween feeling to it. Uh, for the other videos of the songs that haven't been released yet, will there be like a Thanksgiving theme, a Christmas theme, or possibly a Gilmore Girls theme to it? <laughs> you know what? Uh, that Halloween one just kind of, well, that song, you know, it's One Foot in the Grave, so it just seemed appropriate. Yeah, it definitely. Kind of worked. But, I mean, I don't, it, we weren't, uh, it, yeah, there's not going to be a Thanksgiving theme or Halloween, you know, uh, Christmas theme, because that's kind of weird. But uh, they, they, the themes will be based around what the songs are about or, you know, so. Gotcha. No Christmas, sorry. Ah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, is it going to be lyric videos? Is it going to be regular music videos? Or have you just not decided that yet? Well, we are doing lyric videos for everything, okay. uh, every song. And then we will be doing a music video for the second single after Thanksgiving. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so the next single will come out with a new video. And we'll, we'll throw that one out. Nice, man. Nice. Any, uh, any, pl any plans or plays from SiriusXM? Or have you, have you been in contact with those people yet? Or? Yeah, so Given To Me was on SiriusXM for a while. And then uh, the next single, they're actually gonna, they're part of the, 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 uh, the crew that's choosing our next single. So Vinny at, at, uh, at SiriusXM is helping us out with that. So we're just trying to figure out what the next one will be. But uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll pick it up and they'll support as, as usual. And uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, definitely. Wow. It's, it's nice to have contacts. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we've worked a little really hard for those contacts, but it, you know, as you kind of grow and, and you build your, I guess you could say your database, it definitely helps out. And, uh, you know, we definitely appreciate all the help and all the support that we've been getting from everybody, you know, big and small. So it really means a lot to us. Yeah, I, I definitely hear you there. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you're playing, you know, like a dive bar like Dingbats was in Clifton that you just played, or if you're playing, yeah. you know, a ginormous, I guess, arena. You know, it, 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 it doesn't matter with you guys. Like, you go in, you play your hearts out, whether it's in front of one or a thousand people, and, you know, it, it, is, it is very respected. No, they, well, yeah, I mean, our, you know, our thing is to play the same show every night, no matter what, and even if there's three people, those three, if we can blow those three people's minds, you know, hopefully they'll bring three friends and, and it'll just continue to grow as we tour, you know. Yeah, it, it's crazy how word of mouth still exists in the music world. I mean, like with like Facebook and social media as a whole, all you have to do is just be like, hey, like our band. And nine times out of ten, they'll be like, uh, okay, <laughs> without like oh, actually yeah, yeah. listening. So. 
Well, you know, it's it's weird. It's it, it's definitely there. It it does take work though. You know, uh, there's a lot of noise out there. A lot of bands. Really easy to get out there. Um, so you really got to cut through, and you really got to have a good product, and and you got to really uh, put in the time with the fans and answer messages, do comments. And you got to, you know, that whole like mysterious rock star thing doesn't really exist anymore. And it, you know, nobody cares about that. It's like they just want to be a part of your journey. And so we try to, you know, open up as much as we can. Yeah, and it's like an extended family wherever you go. It's like, oh, Jill lives in Utah. We'll be in Utah next month. And, you, you know, like Jill's going to bring out three friends, be like, oh, Keith is coming to the Colorado date and stuff like that. So it kind of snowballs that effect. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The only, reason, the only way you get that is if you connect with everybody. You know, you have to let them, you have to let everybody feel like they're a part of your journey. And yeah. That's just necessary. So. And it's definitely a pain in the ass. I mean, let's be honest. Like we've both done like the Facebook direct messaging, the Twitter direct messaging, where you get like 5,000, you know, in inbox, in, in your inbox, like the messages shit like that. And like half of it's like, oh my God, your band is so sexy. And you're like, oh, did you listen to our music? <laughs> yeah, I love your music. I love all of your albums. You're like, oh, oh yeah, what's your favorite song? Oh, I have so many. And then like they like keep spiraling out into a lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, we just, we kind of got to a point where we don't try too hard. If they send us a message and they love it, and they're like, cool, man, thanks. You know, thanks for the support. <laughs> 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 you know, hopefully you buy the record. All right, here's a link. Yeah, really? <laughs> oh, I love Brian, especially with us being a podcast and having, I don't know, 35 something thousand followers on Twitter. Like you get yeah. the occasional people that, you know, message you and be like, oh my God, I love your band. Um, what? Yeah, we're not a band. <laughs> yeah, about that. Uh, wait, wait, okay, all right. And then I go with it and I go deeper and deeper and they're like, oh, uh, I thought you were a band. And I'm like, all right, you know what? You don't have to lie. Just be honest with us. Be like, hey, listen, you know, I read your automatic DM that I sent out, which is pretty long. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. You know, I read it. I know exactly what you're about and I will listen to it or it's not for me. I mean, that that's exactly. all I want. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, it, it's really funny. I mean, you know, I mean, you really have to, like, spoon feed, uh, you know, things that we think are, like, obvious are not obvious to the, the general listener, the general Facebook user. You know, you really got to lay it out for everybody, which is fine. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely hard work, and sometimes I want to blow my brains out, but, you know, <laughs> it's, it's part of the job, and it's uh, what we do. We get a lot of long drives, so what else am I going to do? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, God. So how bad does the van smell right now? Be honest. We're actually a really clean van. Really? Uh, wow. We, sh we, sh we shower every night. We keep our stuff clean. And uh, we also have a, you know, we have a girl in the van, and she's very clean. So we, uh, yeah, we're very prissy. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go? Truck stops or, like, random people's houses or? No, we stay in hotels every night. Wow, must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, it, 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 we just we just, <laughs> we've earned it at this point. Man. <laughs> so uh, no, yeah, we we definitely you know the showers are unnecessary. Are unnecessary. So. Oh, absolutely, man. There, there was countless interviews I've had where I went into people's vans, and it's just like it's not even body odor; it's just beyond body odor. Like it's mixed in with like moldy food, with like sweaty socks. It's like really fucking rank, man. Oh yeah, no, no, we don't. We're not cool with that. We uh, that won't work for us. <laughs> oh God, I, I really respect that. <laughs> it's it's not yeah. like you just take a fucking can of Axe and just like spray the entire thing on you. Oh, no. I mean, we, this is where, we, you know, at least for the long drives, we're like, this is our home until we get to whatever hotel. So it's like we want to respect our surroundings and, the, you know, and everybody else's wishes. And, you know, we, we treat it, treat it like it's our house. So oh, that is awesome to hear. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it also helps having a hotel room every night where you actually have a shower, you actually have soap. You know, you're not, I don't want to say you're, you're not roughing it, but, you know, there's a lot of people in a lot worse, you know, situations. And you guys, obviously, you've been on the tour since you know, August 31st, and you're still going now, and you haven't broken up or killed each other yet, which is really a fucking accomplishment and a half. <laughs> but Yeah, well, I mean, the, the band's been around for a long time. I mean, even before Lexus, we've been around. We've been doing this for, you know, eight years. So we've definitely done the sleeping on floor, sleeping in the van, you know. We've done it all. We've, uh, we've suffered. We've eaten cat food, dog food. You know, so it's, uh, we've done it. We've done it. Now we're here. <laughs> there you go. 
you start from the bottom and now you're somewhat kind of near the bottom but not really <laughs> yeah exactly we're just a little farther than the bottom <laughs> <laughs> There you go. You can remix that Drake song. Start from the bottom, yeah. and now we're somewhat little, a couple levels higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we actually got a fan question from a Christian Gisondi, G-I-S-O-N-D-I. I don't know how to respond, uh, how to pronounce that name, whatever. Uh, on okay. Facebook asks, uh, does having your cover of a song become famous limit your set list from including original songs? You know, uh, I'm guessing he's talking about Eleanor Rigby. I believe so, that. yes. Uh, I mean, it wasn't really a famous song. I mean, it, it definitely got us into the scene. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if you got the music to back it up, it's, it's not an issue. You know, if you don't have the music to back it up, then, yeah, it could definitely be an issue moving forward. Um, but, you know, we really – we don't even play Elmo Rigby anymore, and we've been focusing on the future and uh, what we did with Alexa. So that's not so much. No. I mean, that works. <laughs> and. Yeah. and and plus, fucking uh, cover songs are basically like heroin to a band. So, like, you've, you play them over and over again. You know, people will start coming out and be like, oh, my God, your, your cover of Eleanor Rigby is amazing. And then, like, if you keep playing it, then people will be like, that's all they expect. Like, they don't go on with the new stuff at all. They're like, just play the one cover song so we can get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, what we've noticed is the single that's on radio is always going to be the most popular song. Yep. But as we've, as we've been touring and people have been listening to the full record, now the, the crowds are being a lot more open to all the songs, which is awesome, you know? So it, it really just comes down to, to promoting all of your music and not just one single song. You know? Yeah. You're not putting all your eggs in one basket, so that's pretty respectable there. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, a, a lot of bands still do that. Like, um, uh, who, who's a good example? Like, the, the Ataris are one, even though they have sort of a semi – you know, great back catalog for like the fans would know that you know yeah. they have great songs, but the casual fans are like, oh my god, play Boys of Summer, and and I'm sure Chris Rowe is is just st standing there like, come on, like we've come out with you know, so long Astoria, we came out with uh, Blue Skies Broken Hearts, we've came out with uh, Welcome the Night, we came out with all these great albums, and all you want to do is hear that one fucking cover song that we did as a joke. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because like I I've always. You know, I, we're not at that point where we have that one song that everybody always wants to hear all the time. But, you know, if it's that song and if it pays the bills and it made your career, just enjoy it, man. Play the song. That's what people want to hear. And if they're going to pay the, you know, anywhere from 20 to $40 ticket to come see you, play the damn song. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Really. No, I, I hear you there. So I, I guess it's safe to say that there's, like, really no song in your catalog that you're actually sick of playing over and over again. No, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, we just love playing music, and this record's all new. We're only playing all the new stuff, so for us, it's pretty fresh. Oh, okay, yeah. Connor, that part, that, that works, so. Yeah, so we're not playing any of the old stuff, like Zombies and Sun or any of that old stuff, so it's all new. Awesome. So I have uh, one more question for you, and it's plans for 2017. What do you got going on? So we got Ship Rocks in January. Uh, oh, nice, man, second, nice. Yeah, it'll be our second time, so we're pumped. It'll be Alexa's first time, so she's excited. And uh, and then we got we have another big tour right after that, but I can't say what it is yet. But it's right off the Ship Rock, and then we're but we're pretty much planning to be on the road the whole year. Uh, should be a pretty big year for us, and and we're pumped. So. That's awesome. So what, what kind of um, Ship Rock? Who who's on it? That's the uh, Hard Rock tour, right? Not the metal one. Oh, Ship Yeah. So it'll be like Breaking Benjamin. I think Stitch Apart's on it. Uh, who else? Uh, the Alter Bridge is going to be on it. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ, wow. A lot of awesome bands. I mean, the, 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 it's a stacked lineup. I'm pretty excited, even not just as a fan of music. So it's going to be fun. That's awesome, man. And you said it was your second time out? Yep, this will be our second time. Wow. So n there's no uh, seasick stories or anything from the first time? or <laughs> Seasick? You know, a lot of people got sick on that last one because uh, I don't know what it was. Um, I ended up getting like a, what do you call it? A uh, like a an nasal infection, which was really weird. Wow! Didn't yeah. make it. Didn't make any sense. But uh, no, you know those big those boats are so big, and they got those stabilizers. You don't really feel it, so it's not so bad. That's good. I've never been on a cruise ship, so I have no idea. I just hear the horror stories of like you know the toilets backing up, or like there was a bad case of salmonella going through, and that's all I know about cruise ships. <laughs> See, that's what I heard going into. But you know, thank God I didn't get salmonella. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I, I hear it's like like a mini city almost. Like you know, you could go. You can't go around the entire place in like a day, more or less. Oh yeah, it's the boat's huge. I mean, it's massive, and there's like there's tons of things going on. Plus, there's you know, there's two of the days are at the beach that so you go on the beach and you hang out. It's rock bands, it's people you toured with, awesome fans that you've seen at shows. I mean, it's like literally one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life, and uh, so honored to be able to do it again. So we're, we're definitely excited. Nice. So do the bands like basically hang out like with the fans, but like, okay, we're playing some, uh, I don't know, Frisbee. And like, you, like you'll see like Ben Burnley playing Frisbee with some random fan or something like that. Or, you know, I don't know if you'll see Ben Burnley doing that, <laughs> but uh, you'll definitely see us doing that. We're, we're uh, you know, we'll be out and about. A lot of the bands do just kind of walk around, hang out. There's uh, activities that you can do with the band, you know? Um, and then obviously there's the shows that we yeah. play. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it's really cool. It's a cool vibe, and uh, all the fans are really respect, respectful. You know, so we're it's great. Uh oh, I hear coughing. <laughs> Quarantine oh, yeah, him. Clayton's sick. Oh, he just geez. gave me the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! But yeah, it, when when to uh, when to actually sit down with Ben or see Ben, ask, ask him to uh, show you his uh, Darth Vader tattoo. This is like the, one of the sickest things I've ever seen in person. Really? He's got a Darth Vader tattoo, I think on his left shoulder. And it's like, okay. it's, it's like the whole thing is like red and you have like the black helmet. Like it really looks awesome. Actually, awesome. Yeah, I was actually one of the first people to see that. We, I interviewed him at um, rock allegiance. One of those big major rock festivals. And, like, yeah. he just took it off. I was like, wow, that thing looks fresh. And he, like, rolled it up. I was like, oh, my God, that looks insane. He's like, yeah, I just uh, took off the bandage this morning. I was like, wow. Oh, it's awesome. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it really came out great. So uh, I'd like to thank you so much for the interview. Um, I know you guys have, let's see, you have uh, Winchester, Virginia coming up on the 2nd. Or we have Cleveland coming up tomorrow. We have Winchester, Virginia on the 2nd. Knoxville, Tennessee yep. on the 3rd. Wilmington, North Carolina on the 4th. 5th is Johnson City, Tennessee. The 7th is Springfield, uh, Missouri. Uh, yep. November 8th is Omaha, Nebraska. And you end everything, Kansas City, Missouri on November 9th. Yep. And then November 10th, you're not going to hear from this band for a good month. <laughs> yeah, I'm going, we're going to sleep. We're going to hibernation. <laughs> I sleep back. I don't blame you there. So uh, right, right before I let you go, we like to ask the people we interview uh, if they have a song in mind that you that you would like us to play to close out the interview. Uh, yeah, why don't we go with uh, Worth the Pain? Worth the Pain? All right. Yeah. Done deal. Mike, thank you so much, man. It's really been an honor. Hey, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. All right. Best of luck, man.